What's going on, smart people? I haven't done a vlog in quite a while, so I figured I might do that today. Today is Thursday, and I'm kicking things off with some grading. If you're thinking about going to grad school for physics, or really probably grad school for anything, this is your future. Lots and lots of grading. I don't mind it too much, though. I TA for this course, this lab in something that I should probably know the name of by now. It's either heat, light, and sound, or heat, sound, and optics, something like that and I'm just doing a bunch of grading for the lab reports. What's cool about Thursdays is I don't have class on Thursdays. So aside from the weekly TA meetings that I have, Thursdays are pretty much my own to do with as I choose, which really means I can either choose between doing homework or doing research, both of which sound equally cool to me because I just got this new chalk holder, which for some reason, this is a highlight of my week. Um, so I'm gonna finish up grading for a little bit and then I'm gonna go to campus. And I guess I'll have to decide on whether I wanna do homework which is probably what I should be doing, or research, which is... I think I've already made up my mind. I'm gonna do research. For those of you who are interested in what I do research in, I am currently calculating matrix elements of the energy momentum tensor by calculating all of these Feynman diagrams and stuff. This one I'm not afraid to show you because all it tells you is that self-energy is a thing that exists. But yeah, I calculate these Feynman diagrams, I massage these integrals until it either becomes something that Peskin and Schroeder tells me how to solve, or I throw into Mathematica because it's just too hard. Um, you may think, oh, well, you can figure out the integral and have a nice analytic expression. Probably not, and even if you could, the analytic expression ends up being like 100 lines long, so it's not particularly helpful. But for now, we're probably just gonna be leaving these things as integrals. The only thing is I'm getting conflicting feedback on what the integral should be. Uh, Mathematica is telling me that it diverges, my advisor tells me that it shouldn't, and Python gives me an analytic expression that's 100 lines long that I can't really make sense of whether or not it, it's helpful or not. So the goal for today is to convince myself that the integral either does or doesn't converge. I suspect that it does and that I'm just not particularly good with Mathematica yet. Uh, but I'm gonna go to campus and finish up grading. And no, you can't see the integral. You can see it once there's a paper. One thing that I neglected to mention is that I changed offices, so I guess I should give a tour of where I'll be spending the rest of grad school. So here's just the center. There's a big table that's right next to the blackboard, so I spent a lot of time here. Here's a theorem that I've been working on. It's really done. It kind of proves itself, you know what I mean? There's five other grad students in this office. No one's in here right now, not just being loud and obnoxious. It's always super quiet in here though, so even though no one's in here, I feel like I'm being distracting. Then we get to my cubicle. Got the spacious desk, a fan because I sweat if it looks hot outside, a computer that I don't know how to sign on to, so I just use my laptop. On the bookshelf, we've got a course in field theory, gauge theories in particle physics, stat mech, classical mechanics, tensor calculus, my field theory notes, bunch of algebra and geometry books for some reason. I don't know. They were here when I got here. More particle physics, high energy, quantum, renormalization, uh, Peskin and Schroeder, and then of course we got the shorty on the desk. This pretty much captures the entire relationship right there. <laughs> As you could have seen, there's a lot of papers all over my desk. Usually I would like tack them onto the wall, but it's made out of what I can only assume is adamantium. So I have things like Klebsch-Gordon coefficient tables just all over the desk right now. But in addition to grading and trying to get some research done today, I also actually have to write a talk because the State University of New York reached out to me, said they were having some symposium, and asked me to give a webinar where I talk about what I'm doing, how I got into YouTube and things like that, because I thought it would be fun for their undergrads. So. It's kind of funny, my first talk in grad school for physics has nothing to do with graduate physics, but more just YouTube stuff, so I also have to write that today. I gotta say, I haven't really thought back on the story of why I started making YouTube videos before. This has been an interesting day, and yes, I'm doing it in LaTeX, you can fight me, I'll fight you harder. Uh, maybe I'll share the story on YouTube one day. Who knows? Abrupt transition to the next day. Today is the day of the talk. I realized I didn't mention the title of it. It's called Tensors and Memes, an Unorthodox Approach to Science Communication. And for the talk, I really just discussed that there needs to be more exposition in physics. There needs to be more people talking about what they're going through, what's right around the corner, what you can expect should you choose to pursue a degree in physics. And I do this by going through why I started my channel, I talk about what kinds of videos I make, and I really just encourage other people to be a part of this. So the talk is all written, I'm just doing some last minute preparation. I don't actually speak for another few hours, 
but I, I can't just sit on my hands. So I guess the next clip will just be me saying if it went well or went bad. It went so bad. I'm just kidding. I haven't actually spoken yet. Later. <sighs> okay, so the talk is actually done now. I think it went pretty well, all things considered. Uh, so the talk was via some uh, Skype equivalent, but it was one-sided. I couldn't really see the audience or hear them, uh, which is interesting. It's interesting enough giving a talk when you're not pointing at slides and things like that, let alone when you can't see or hear reactions. But it, it was good. I think it went really well. There were lots of questions at the end, which is always a good sign. It means people are engaged. My answers to the questions were probably the only not very good part about the talk. I think I could have given better responses, but it is what it is. Um, now that that stuff is done, I can focus on doing... I don't feel like doing homework. I'm going to level with you. I think I want to do a little bit of research, but just to get everyone on the same page with what I'm doing this semester, I'm taking three classes. I'm taking a course in electromagnetism, I'm taking high energy physics, and a course in experimental nuclear physics. You know it's a difficult semester when Jackson E&M is the easy class. Uh, right now in E&M we're doing the whole multipole expansion stuff. You're probably familiar with that if you've just had undergraduate E&M. You got your total charge, dipole, quadrupole moments. So this stuff is a pretty easy, I think, section. So was the last part where it's just a lot of expansions in terms of orthogonal functions like spherical harmonics, uh, boundary value problems, and Green's functions. And then for high energy physics, we're taking a very historical route, I guess you could call it, where we're solving these problems under the assumption that we have the tools that these people at this point in history had. So it's a lot of relativistic kinematic calculations. It's a lot of uh, talking about the different types of particle accelerators or detectors that they had at the time and what you could deduce given certain patterns and so forth. Uh, it's a really interesting class. The homeworks take me a while and the lab reports for the nuclear physics lab take me the longest amount of time for sure. To give you guys a bit of an idea of what I do for research, it always starts with some Lagrangian. So as an example, I wrote what's called 5-4 theory. So you have some kinetic terms and a field that you're interested in and the interaction that you're considering. And uh, Noether's theorem says that for every continuous global symmetry, something is conserved. So when that symmetry is under space-time translation, the conserved quantity is the energy momentum tensor, which is defined in terms of the Lagrangian, uh, or rather derivatives and the metric acting on it. And then what I always do, what I'm interested in, is you sandwich this energy momentum tensor in between two initial and final momentum states, and then you have this exponential term that characterizes the interaction, and then you expand in perturbation theory, you end up calculating Feynman diagrams. So when you do perturbation theory, you generate all of these terms, all of these integrals, and there's ways of shorthanding these integrals in terms of Feynman diagrams, which I then try to calculate. More often than not, those diagrams tend to go to infinity, and there's a, a prescription for systematically getting rid of those infinities, which is regularization and renormalization. Now that stuff, I'd be lying to you if I said I understood it completely, uh, but I am getting better at it, I think. But yeah, that's what I do, is I start with the Lagrangian, define the energy momentum tensor, and calculate these matrix elements. I don't know if that sounds cool to you or not, but I think it's pretty cool. But I think that's going to do it for this little update video. I know I said that I wanted it to be a proper vlog, but it just didn't turn out that way. Maybe next week or so I can bring the camera to campus for a full week and get some nice stuff. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video nonetheless. Let me know in the comments section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.